Stick around to find out how you can learn even more about music with today's sponsor, Pianote. A pedal tone or a pedal point is when we keep a consistent bass note underneath moving chords above. So the intro here of Jump by Van Halen is built from a massive pedal point where we just keep C in the bass and we have all of these other chords above, like that's a G chord over a C chord. C chord, F chord, G chord, C, and a few sus chords at the end there. If we matched the bass line to follow the chords as it would be more conventional with a chord progression, it completely loses its character. It just sounds completely different. So the pedal point, despite seeming a very simple idea, just keeping a bass note there, adds so much to this chord progression. It changes the context in which we hear these chords above. So for example, actually that G chord above C, even though we're playing a G and we're playing a C, really we're kind of more hearing a C major 9 sound, because this C over G is just a C major 9 missing the third. So pedal point is one of those things which can result in some really interesting, sophisticated chords, but from your point of view as a player, you're actually doing something quite simple, just holding a consistent bass note. Another great example of pedal point use in a song is in Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears. The main song is built from a vamp of the chord A, going down to the chord G, which is chord five to chord four of the key. But we don't have the sort of more predictable bass line that you would write for that, a, a, a bass line that just follows the chords. No, instead, Tears for Fears put the entire chord progression over a, a pedal point of our tonic note, D. So we have D just staying in the bass, and then above that, chords of the progression, five and four, but over the one. And it creates so much more tension, so much more detail in the chord progression. The most common way to use a pedal point, really, is to have the tonic note as, as the thing we're pedaling. That's what we had in Van Halen, that's what we've got here. The tonic note standing strong and just dominating the whole thing laying a foundation over which other chords on the key can be played. Pedal point is a great way to build tension in a piece of music. A great example of this is Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. In verse 1, despite the moving chord changes, the bass is just staying on the tonic note, it's pedaling that tonic note underneath every single chord, and this creates that sense of tension throughout the whole section. Compare that to verse 2, where now the bass does follow the root note of each chord. We suddenly get this sense of release, it's like the song was being held in place against its will, and now it's been let loose and it can flow freely. As you may have noticed, Eye of the Tiger actually features two different pedal points in two different parts of the music. Of course, we've got the bass guitar providing the pedal point we just discussed, but on top of that, we've got the electric guitar chugging away on the tonic note of C, constantly playing C across all of these chord changes. And this is also a pedal point. It's actually what we call an inverted pedal point because unlike normal pedal point, which is in the bass range underneath all of the music, this guitar is chugging away on that consistent note in the treble range of the music. So we call it an inverted pedal rather than a normal pedal point. The tension of pedal point makes it a very useful tool for a film composer. For example, John Williams is a big fan of using pedal point. We can see it here in his score for Indiana Jones, where multiple different chords are all played over a consistent pedal tone of C.
What's great about this is we've got all of these actually quite unrelated chords that usually wouldn't work that well together, but because they're all played over this consistent pedal of C, it kind of forcibly marries them all together. You might be wondering now, why are we calling this a pedal point? Isn't that quite an unusual name? What is it about a pedal here? Well, actually, it goes back to the origin of this technique, which is in pipe organ music. Beyond the various manuals, the various keyboards on an organ, there is also a keyboard of pedals at the performer's feet, which play very low bass notes. So the reason that keeping a sustained bass note under changing chords is called a pedal point is because an organ player would have literally been playing that continuous bass note with a pedal, hence pedal point. So as you may have noticed, I'm not in my familiar studio, not in my familiar backdrop. I'm actually out in Canada at the moment at the Piano Studio. You might know Piano as a long-term sponsor of my videos. They've been really supportive of the stuff I do on YouTube. And I'm here today making some videos with them. Piano offer a massive collection of tutorials and lessons covering every facet of playing the piano. For example, you may have noticed that during this video, there's been a lot of slash chords. So if you wanted to learn more about how slash chords work, well, Piano have a whole range of lessons to do with slash chords, including this one by Lisa. One more time, this little transition C, G in first inversion, slash B, and then A minor. And then just to kind of finish off our progression, we'll move to F. If you're interested in seeing all of that, then do check out Piano with a free trial using the link in the description. Another example of this tonic pedal, where we're keeping the tonic note pedaling in the left hand underneath changing chords, is Your Song by Elton John. So the intro of Your Song is like this. But Elton doesn't do the left hand part that I just did. He doesn't follow the chords in the right hand. So the chords we're getting here are E flat, A flat, B flat, and then back to A flat. But rather than following each of those chords and underpinning it with each chord's root note, he just keeps E flat, the tonic note, pedaling in his left hand underneath the changing chords above. And it adds that lush tension to what would otherwise be a fairly simple move up one, five, and four of the key. Elton is actually very um, prone to using pedal point in his music, and I think part of the reason for this is because he's a piano player. When you write at the piano, you are simultaneously deciding on the harmony part, so the chords in the right hand, but also the bass part. You can, you're kind of making executive decisions on how the bass and the harmony will interact. Whereas if you're writing on guitar, the bass part will be provided by someone else on a bass guitar, so you wouldn't have that same executive control over what bass notes are played. The bass player might decide to pedal, but he probably instead will just go for the default route of following the chords, as is so often the case. So piano players can often see a bigger picture of harmony and then make decisions like that. One of Alton's best uses of pedal point, and once again this is a tonic pedal, so the pedal point is staying on the one, in this case B, is I'm Still Standing. The opening section, which is very similar to the chorus, is in B minor. We're getting all sorts of different chords, but underneath all of them is a consistent pedal note of B. go to the verse, even though we've now gone to the major key, we're still pedaling that same tonic hold. So as we go into the verse with I'm Still Standing, we're going from B minor to the parallel major, B major. But of course, both of those keys have the same tonic of the note B. So despite the key change, the bass can keep pedaling through with B. And it creates so much tension, but it also kind of glues the whole thing together. It's, it's just a great way of adding that cohesion to the chord progression, and also sort of bridging the gap between that move from B minor to B major, to almost to the point that you don't notice that there is a key change between the sections of this song. Pedal tone gives harmony a sense of being still, a sense of being static. 
We can hear this, for example, in Us and Them by Pink Floyd, where all of the chords of the verse are over a D pedal point. Every chord has D as its lowest voice, so the harmony is very much sat still on that pedal point of D, but with each chord we get a different perspective, a different point of view on that static D tonic note. So all of the pedal points we've looked at so far have been what I've been describing as a tonic pedal, where the note we're pedaling, the note we're keeping underneath everything in the bass is the tonic note. And that is the most common type of pedal tone, but the second most common type of pedal tone or pedal point is what we can call a dominant pedal, where instead of pedaling the root note, we're pedaling the fifth degree. Dominant refers to the fifth degree. So for example, if we were in the key of E, B would be the fifth degree of the scale. So if we were to take chord four and chord five like this, we keep the fifth degree underneath them. This is a dominant pedal. And you might recognize this move as the intro of I'm Not In Love by 10CC, where they open with this dominant pedal. Another great example of dominant pedal is in the song You Keep Me Hanging On by The Supremes. Here the electric guitar is repeatedly playing the note E flat. The song is in the key of A flat, so E flat is the fifth degree of the key, hence dominant pedal. And this is also actually an inverted dominant pedal, because the guitar is playing in the treble range rather than the bass range. Another fantastic use of inverted pedal point is in Johnny Cash's version of Hurt. During the chorus of the song, we get this persistent G pedaled in quarter notes over the moving chord progression, adding a sort of solemn sense of urgency to the music. Have it all. My empire. So earlier I mentioned tonic pedal, which is the most common type of pedal when we're pedaling the tonic note of the key. I also mentioned dominant pedal, which is when we instead pedal the fifth degree of the scale, dominant meaning fifth. But we could pedal any note we like in the key. And a great example of the power of pedal point is Turn It On Again by Genesis. This song is ultimately in the key of B, and sure enough, for the entire intro and opening verse, we're getting a pedal point of B underneath every single chord change. And there's a lot of chord changes here. Then in the bridge, we instead get a pedal point of the flat two degree of the scale, C natural, under every single chord. So that's pedal point. Let me know in the comments if you can think of some other great examples of pedal point. 